Hi everyone, welcome to Last Minute Coders. My name is Vinay. I hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we are going to learn how we can paginate a gallery, filter multiple columns, load 2000 plus record, and design a responsive gallery and an app. So I hope you guys are excited and if you are, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of such amazing videos that I'm going to cover in the future. And uh, like this video, share it with your colleagues and friends. It will help me sustain this channel. It's very difficult to like create this content to get time for this. So if you want me to do such amazing content, please do support me. I now need. in this video, as you can see, these are the things that we are going to learn. And you can see I've created one beautiful demo for you people. So I'll teach you how I designed this uh, UI. And this is very much dynamic, by the way. This is very much responsive. So you can see this gallery is up here, very beautifully designed. You can see below pagination kind of thing is there. Here we are seeing count of all the items and I'm loading more than 2000 records. It's not that I'm loading only like uh, 500 or 100 records. No, I'm loading more than uh, 2000 record and it's super fast. It's super fast. It's not going to be slow. It's super fast. I'm showing the current items in the gallery. So currently I'm showing all the items. So you can see up here. Pagination you can see. So if 1000 is selected, selected up here. So 1000 items we are seeing up here. If I select let's say 200. So I'll see 200 items up here. So you can see this is, this is very, very, very much dynamic. And this page numbers are also very dynamic. You can see currently 18 pages are there. If I select 20. So 172 pages there if i select 500 so seven pages are there i can click on next and even this next button is being disabled see if i select back so it is very 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 much dynamic on the left hand side you can see this filter section is up here you can start from any field it's there is no foundation that you you have to start with let's say model then make then generation no i can start with kia i can select like hashback so see, I am seeing the current items in my gallery is 138. If I select these two things, then current items is 138. There is this clear button on the top. If I click up here, so see filters are being cleared again. The current items and the gallery is 3430. All right, so I have a blank screen with me as you can see up here. And here we are going to design a very similar UI like this. So see, whenever we talk about a responsive UI, right? So if you'll click on insert, if you'll hit on this layout, we have these, these kind of container, horizontal container, vertical container. Okay, so these are responsive in nature. So let me click on uh, a vertical container for now. And as you can see up here, there is this container which is on my screen. As you can see up here, there is some shadow to it and uh, maybe some border roundness to us so let me first click on it let me remove its uh, drop shadow and let me remove its border radius then i'll go to its x property on the right hand side side as you can see up here I'll, I'll change it to zero i'll change its y also to zero and on its width i need to write this code parent dot width and on its height i need to write this code parent dot height so whatever will be the width of my screen and whatever is the width of my height of my screen uh, this container will take the same width and the same height right now once this is done see the first thing i need is a header inside this container so if you will see my header i have three things in it i have one logo i have one uh, text and one image right so how to build this kind of system so just go to your container inside it Inside this vertical container, I'll insert a horizontal container and I'll rename this container to let, let's say header container. Let me rename this container to main container as well so that it will be easy for us to maintain. So this is my header container. As you can see, this much part is being taken by this header container. Again, I'll go to its drop shadow. I'll change it to none. I will not give it any uh, border radius. Let me change it to zero. Right. Let me give it some color. Let's say this blue color I can give. Now, how to change its width to like the full width? I'll click on the header container. It has one uh, property like uh, if you if you'll see uh, uh, this stretch property is there. If I click on this stretch, you can see it is completely stretched. If I turn off this flexible height and give it some height like let's say sixty, so I can I can do like this. Okay, very simple. 
Now, since it is a horizontal container, content inside this container will be aligned horizontally. So what do I mean by that? So if I search for any icon, so you can see there are so many icons. I'll use the scars icon. So you can see the scars is starting from the left hand side. If I click on my horizontal container, so you can see justify horizontal is left hand side uh, align vertical. Let me align them vertically center. Okay. I'll click on my icons. I'll change its color to white. First of all, let me just show you the theme of my app as well. The theme that I'm using is this office blue theme. Okay. Uh, again, I'll click on the scars uh, height. You can change it to whatever you like. Let me change it to 40, 40. So I like to keep them in a square and shape. Now, if you wanted to give a padding from the left hand side, go to header container. There's this padding left property. So just give like 20 padding. Right, once this is done, again, I'll click on my header container, go to insert, go to popular, label is there. Now turn on flexible width for this, uh, say this flexible width property there. I turned on for this label, I'll center line this label and change its font color to white and uh, font size to maybe 20. And then we can, we can say, let's say, let's say my app, I'm not naming it. A very big app but i'm saying just my app and just how to show the uh, show your image your image so just click on header container just search for image control and i'll click up here go to its height property i'll write 40 go to its width property i'll write 40 and i'll click on my header container padding from the right i'll give 20 okay then i can click on this image to show my image up here i'll say user function dot image Okay, so as you can see, my image is now coming up here to give it a complete roundness or circle just in its border radius property, change it to 100. If 100 doesn't work, change it to 1000. If 1000 doesn't work, change it to 10,000. It's totally up to you. Okay, the bigger the number, the better it is. As you can see up here, everything is in center line. Everything is looking properly. The only thing is let me change the label uh and make it a little bit uh, let's say bold or maybe bold is fine right so i have created my header which is looking really good right so header container part is done now uh now for if we talk about the side nav bar right i have the side nav bar also so inside my main container i'll again create one more con not the not the normal container let me delete this so i'll create a vertical container okay and uh, I will uh, see it's minimum, uh, it's aligned container stretch. So I'll not stretch this. I'll click on this start one. So for now, let me give it some gray color so that you can distinguish. So this is my side nav container. I'll name it as. Okay. Now the width of this, let me give, let's say 200. And if 200 is less, let me give it 300. Okay. I think 300 is more than enough. This is this is looking kind of good. Now, if you wanted to give gap between this header and side nav container, click on your main container. There is this gap properties there. I'll say 20 pixels. You can see 20 pixels gap is up here, right? Now, see, there is there is one issue. Like let's say if if I want gap from this left hand side, right? And if I give padding up here, let's say if I give padding of 20 pixels up here, so the problem is header will also get this padding right so let's not give give it like this i'll click on my side this container what i'll do is inside this container i can again can create one more container it's not that i cannot i can again create another vertical container inside it and i'll say child nav container okay Anyways, this is the main container, but inside it, I created a child nav container. You can see it's flexible height is on, it stretches on. So again, I'll click on this. Uh, I will not stretch it. And on its width, I'll say uh, 250. Correct. And I will click on the side nav container. Here, I'll give some padding. Let's say 20 from left, 20 from right. And this container, this child nav container, let me give it some like different color so that you can distinguish for now. So let me give this dark green color so that you can distinguish. So see, this dark green color is of my, is of my, this container. 
uh, child nav container, right? And this light gray is my side nav container. So inside this, I'll create the content, the, the filter content, right? So this is this is good. I'll click on my outside container. I will not give it any shadow, no border radius, no background blur, so that if anybody see, they will only see this child nav container. They will not see that side side nav container. Now this is this this part is done now. Uh, now let's uh, let's build this section, the gallery section. Okay, so inside my main container, I'll again create one vertical container, right? But see, if I do like this, now do you see the problem? It is starting from the below, which is which is totally wrong. So my is my side nav container. Now my question could be: Is my side nav container is right? So instead of naming this as side nav container, let me name it as body container. Okay body container and this one i'll name it as side nav container and i will cut this one i'll paste it inside my body container okay and my body container will direction will be horizontal now why i am doing this you will see just in a moment let me click on a stretch so you can see this time the side nav container is this let me enable uh, let me stretch it turn off its flexible uh, the height let me change it to maybe 300 but now you can see right my filters is on this side the side nav bar is on this side and my gallery this container this container 19 is my gallery container gallery container is on the right hand side how how does this happen so do you see this horizontal container i have horizontal container will contain the content horizontally that means left to right vertical means top to bottom so see these are vertical container this is horizontal container okay now let me give it some color let's say yellow color now how to give gap between them so i'll click on this body container there is this gap property if I, in this gap property you can see there is this gap property the fourth one if i say 20 pixels so see 20 pixels gap is there isn't it amazing right so this is how we give gap now i'll click on my the side nav bar container okay i'll click on click on this container and what i'll what uh, i'll do is this uh, this border radius is there let me give like more border radius let's say 30 okay let me give it a uh, more uh, shadow let's say semi bold right so this this can uh, this can be done which is uh, good and on this container i'll uh, what i'll what i'll do is first of all i need a horizontal container for labels so i'll click on this and i'll click on horizontal container and drop shadow i'll say none bot radius i'll give zero Okay, I'll turn off the flexible height. Let me give the color of this like blue so that you can distinguish between them. Uh, there is this uh, minimum. Uh, there is this width property is there, but uh, width should be stretched. Th that is fine. Height. Let me give like let's say fifty for now. Here I'll I'll have all my labels. Maybe forty or thirty. Thirty is more than. Thirty is more than enough. So let me change it to 30 or maybe 40 for now. Later on, we can we can change it up to our requirement. Right. So this part is like looking good. And then bottom section is there. So how to create that bottom section? So again, we need to utilize a horizontal container. Now, again, wait a sec. I pasted it at the wrong place. So it should be inside my main container only. So this is uh, my footer, I'll say footer container. Okay, I'll turn off flexible height. Okay, this I need to turn it off and I'll change its height to let's say 60 maybe. 60 is, uh, 60 is more than more than enough. Okay, I'll click on my main container. Uh, I don't want to give like gap between them. If I wanted the gap, I'll click on my uh, body container. So I can utilize this padding property, okay uh let's say 10 from the top and 10 from the bottom i can i can do that uh in this photo section uh let me not give any shadow let me not give any border radius and uh let's say its color will be let's say dark gray something kind of this so that uh, see basic layout i i have shown you how you can design this basic kind of layout right 
So this layout we are successfully able to design on this screen. And here, if you see the footer container, it has two sections, right? One section is on the left hand side, one section is on the right hand side. So what you can do is again, you can create two more horizontal container inside it. So one is this, uh, okay, inside my footer container, I create one more uh, horizontal container. I'll turn off, uh, see this, it uh, alignment is a stretch. I'll align it to top, first of all, okay. And then flexible width is on, just let it turn on. So I'll copy this container 13, I'll again paste it. So uh, this part I can say like pagination container and this part I can say count of item container. Okay, so this this I can do count, count of item container is there. Uh, there may be some property called height. So let me change its height to let's say for now. Let me change it to 50. Uh, this pagination also I'll change it to 50. Okay. Now I'll click on this footer container. Let me align the content inside them in the cent uh see this two center are there, so I can align them to the center. See this uh, align vertical, I'll align it to cent center line and vertically. And which is now it is looking good. I can give them some color, like both of them. I can let's say let's give orange color to one and the other I'll give let's say this red. Okay, so maybe maybe uh Maybe this purple I'll give. If you want to have gap between them, click on your footer container. So whatever is the parent container of them, just click on click there. And let's say if you wanted to give gap 20. If you wanted to give a little padding from left and right again. So here you can see 20. If I write 20, 20. So isn't everything is proper now? Everything is in and proper manner. Correct. There is proper gap, proper UI, everything. So this is how you design a responsive app. So if I click on setting this time, if I go to display setting, if I turn off this scale to fit, just see. If I save my application first, and after saving my application, if I'll play the app, so see this. This app is following all the rules. Even if I go to any tablet, so see, it is following all the rules. Even if I go to mobile, right? And even if I rotate it. So in mobile, I know its UI is going to get messed up reason because the layout that we have designed is for a landscape is for landscape devices. I'll show you how to maybe in some other video, I'll show you how to design a, a layout for both of them. So see portrait UI is completely different and this phone UI is completely different. So we have to keep, keep that in mind before designing our application. So the design that we had in mind is this uh, is for landscape devices. So that is why. Uh, in landscape devices, it will it will look awesome as you can see up here. If you'll go to any any device, right? Even if I rotate this one, I think for tablet, even if we rotate, it's it's kind of good, okay. But for mobile, uh, there there are some changes that we have to that we have to make. But see, first of all, layout is done. Once the layout is done, now what we have to do is we have to uh, start. Uh, firstly, we need data, right? We need to connect our data. So I have this SharePoint list with me uh, with this uh, the stable cars you can see. I have one Excel. I'll provide that Excel. Uh, maybe in the description section, I'll provide a link so that you can click on that. Maybe a GitHub link or one Google Drive or OneDrive link. You can click on that and download this Excel from there. Okay, to so that you can practice. You can directly and uh, note one thing: if you if you are using Excel as a data source. So use online Excel, save that Excel in some OneDrive or SharePoint and then connect it with your Canvas app Power App. Or you can do one thing, whatever Excel I'll provide, just go to site content and uh, site content of your SharePoint uh, site and then click on list and then click on from Excel and just select that particular Excel that I have provided and click create a like table, a list like this, okay? In this list, uh, see, these are the column. Uh, the column is this. This is car ID. Okay, ID trim is nothing but car ID. This is make, model, generation, year from year to, and then the city is there. Then trim is there. The horsepower is written up here. And I have like one column like this index ID. Just ignore this column, but this index ID is column there. This is a very important column. Okay, if you have a very large, uh, 
large SharePoint list, it's always good to have a number column or index ID column. Okay. So this is a number column, which is always a preferred choice. So even if you have any big list with you, I would recommend if you are suffering from delegation, if you are facing issues, warnings. So always create this index ID column. If you will have this, you will be successfully able to filter the records. Not only 5000 record, but like more than 5000 record you can get in your Canvas app Power App and your app will work, will function properly. Okay. So this is this is there now if you'll go to if I go up here if I go to settings you can see this uh, table I've already connected if you don't know how to connect a list so just click on add data connectors SharePoint then select your connection then select uh, my data is in this site so I'll select the site and this is the list I'll click on it and hit on connect I've already connected not connecting it again so this is already there which is which is well and good now see up now see up here uh firstly let me just show you uh show you how to show the total count of uh total the number of items that i have inside my this table cars okay so let me change this color to white maybe for now okay and here i'll insert one label okay uh wait a sec where that label is okay i think that label is pasted outside let me click up here and i'll paste it inside it okay and the font size i will change it to 10 because in my case 10 is more than enough i'm working on a big monitor uh so vertically line it i'll align it at the center maybe semi bold i can do and here i'll say uh total items okay something like this or all items something whatever whatever you feel like uh, you can write so total items how to get the total number of items for that what i would recommend you what is the best and the easiest way so see if you will go to this power automate is there so we will ut utilize power automate to get the total count of items see if i if i do like this if i say there is a function called count rows if anyone of you may think that I may not know this function, so I know. But see, with this, what will happen? If I do like this, I'll see this delegation warning. Right? And I'm only seeing 2000 records. Some of you may only see 500 records. Why I'm seeing 2000? So if I go to settings and in general setting, you see data row limit is there. I have changed it from 500 to, to 2000, but I cannot increase it. So see, this warning is there. It, it should be between 1 and 2000 only. Okay. So how to get the or get all the items? So for that, you need to utilize Power Automate. Okay, so just go to Power Automate, click on Add Flow, Create New Flow. I'm showing everything from like basic. Okay, I'll not skip any of the steps, so you don't have to worry. Uh, create a new flow, and here you can see this is our Power Automate flow. So if you are not familiar with this, very simple. It is very very simple. See each and every flow will have one trigger so this is the trigger and the next if you click on new step these are the actions you can see these are the action so a single flow can have one trigger so trigger is this power app button so when i click on this power app button then this flow will trigger or maybe maybe when a screen is visible or when a screen is hidden then we can run run this run this flow okay so this is a workflow so from power apps do i need any input no i don't need any any input so how can i get the count of uh, the items that i have present that are present in my sharepoint list so let me just show you my sharepoint list first of all if i go to my site content so if i go up here do you see this when i see table car this this number is coming right three four three zero so these are the number of items i have right in this particular list even if I go to any other list, you can see the sample list is 45 item. This table car image is 5. Okay, so this, how to get this? This is this is the main task. How to get this item count, right? So for that, for that, there is a control HTTP. If you'll search for HTTP, send an HTTP request to SharePoint. This is the control, right? Site address, just select your site properly. 
so my site is this uh, vk solution one export as i've shown you up here so if i see this this is my site so i've selected the proper site the method should be get because we wanted to get something right so there are so many method up here so you can read about them but get means to to get the data right put means to like update the data post means to create a new record okay same way patch means to also create a new record delete means delete the existing record okay so we wanted to get something right now you can see they have written some syntax up here so underscore api slash web slash list slash get by title and inside this bracket i need to give my list name right so very simple uh i can i can use a notepad plus plus uh, see this notepad is there right let me press enter enter so let me first type up here api slash web slash lists slash get by e i t l e and if in case you are wondering from where i am seeing i am seeing from this example right api slash web slash lists slash get by title inside double inside this double quote single quote so the name of my list if i go up here click on this list so the name of this list is this on the top you can see on the link beside this list this is the list so if you have a spaces or anything you will see the list name like this so my list doesn't contain any spaces so the name is proper but whatever your name the list name is just copy it from this link okay from the sharepoint link now just go to go up here and uh, sorry where is this yes i'll go up here and paste it up here okay once this is done i'll copy this thing i'll paste it up here okay now one more thing you have to do you have to write here accept and in the second parameter you have to write application slash json okay so in the header section you have to pass this once you once you will do this just hit on save just hit on save and just see whether it is throwing you an error or whether it is not throwing an error whether it is working properly or not so see it got successfully added but uh, before i do anything let me click on edit again i forgot to change its name so i'll change the name so from top you can change the name let's say pa is for power automate uh, get item count get i'll say share point item count okay something like that i can do i can save this uh, very well and good so whatever changes i'll do up here right uh, let me save it and then uh, yes it is save i can close it now it is refreshing up here so which is well and good i can see this there is this thing called make dot power automate dot com you can go to my flows okay and see this this flow will come up here as well pa get sharepoint item count so see the same flow is coming up here right so i'll be on this screen only i'll go to my uh, power apps and see how to run this flow from power apps so just to show you how this run uh, let me create a button on any of this container let me create a button up here okay so see this is a this is a button that uh, that is there in this screen so on this button what is the code that i have to write i have to write pa the name of the flow see pa get sharepoint underscore item count dot run function is there and i'll open the bracket and close the bracket that's that's pretty much it okay if i play my app if i click on this button so see in my flow run history if i refresh up here you can see three seconds ago this flow ran and if i click up here it ran successfully so let me click on this let me see whether it gave me data or not so see it is it is giving me some data as you can see up here it is trying to give me give me some data so sharepoint list is there data tag so everything is there but the item if you will see the item count property is not there right if you will see i don't know let me click on the show raw output and if you will see up here i don't think the item count property is up here right okay it is it it contains so see this item count property is there so it is uh, inside for some of you it may be difficult but see this body uh, this is json by the way 
so this body this is header header container we ignore the header part we just take the body part so see in this body uh this body see it don't think that it is closing up here it is not because this is the this is opening and closing so this is the whole body up here right inside my body i have uh, this thing item count property okay and in this item count i have this 3430 okay inside see just know the word inside body i have this property item count so i'll click on edit i'll click on edit this is the new designer view currently i don't like it so i'll disable it i'll add a new step so i can initialize one variable initialize there is a i can initialize a variable i can say var uh, sp item count okay and i can change it to integer i can click on this value so see what i'll do is i'll go to expression okay what i did is i have gone to expression okay so here i can write expression like excel like expression i can write okay so simple simple code let's say if you want to concat something though there is this concat so don't don't get like uh, like confused like what what we are doing up here okay so i'll go to this i'll click on this body but uh, let me let me do one thing let me click on concat then i'll click on this body okay so that i'll get uh, the, that body in the code format so see i just wanted this output in this thing this body is there right now once we got this uh, body in the coded format okay so again let me just show you if i remove this see if you go to if you go to dynamic content if you directly click on body it will be like this but we don't want this okay what do we need body so body contains so many things right just now i have shown you so just go to expression just click on any let's say concat go to dynamic content then if you click on body you will get this code i'll remove this concat opening bracket and at last there is this that closing bracket will also be there so i'll remove that i'll remove this body also by pressing that cross icon then after this see from this body what i need is item count so see the spelling need to be proper so it i was capital and c was capital for that i'll click on okay and i'll click on run to test this to test this again what you can do is either you can go to your power apps okay firstly whatever changes this time i did changes on this flow right i didn't changes from here so i need to refresh my flow up here as well so let me refresh it once it get refresh i'll press on this button then so see this time i'll play the uh, play the application and click on this button and let me go back to this flow let me go back and just see the running history four second ago it ran successfully and if i click on this initialize variable you can see it got this count right three four three zero now i just need to send this count back to my canvas app how i'll do that i'll click on edit and uh, here see add new step is there so there is one respond back to uh, power apps there is the that action is there so respond to power apps or flow so i'll click up here add an action so that is a number so i'll click on a number i'll say where or i can say uh, item count something like that i can say this is the item count anyways so the variable that i have created is this where sp item count so i'll click up here from this dynamic content i'll select up select that particular variable i'll click on save now this item we are sending from our flow to our app so how to retrieve this item in the app so just click on this button okay let me first refresh the flow up here once it is refreshed then i'll show you how we can retrieve it so once it is refreshed just use dot operator after it and see now dot item count is automatically coming right so it is automatically coming what i need to do is i need to create one variable so i am creating a variable using update context syntax okay i'll say where item count and colon and after that this code that i have written so this variable will hold that particular item count the 3420 something like that okay so currently if i double click on this where item count uh, you will you will not see you will not see anything okay so i'll play my application but if i click on this button this time just see after this after i press on this button if i double click up here 
okay let us sing record let me go up here and instead of this if i paste this variable where item count does it contain dot property by it is saying expected a uh, string okay so see the number we are passing right let me change it to text let's see whether it it works or not there is some error just in passing expected number but got a string wait a sec wait a sec let let me let me check this this check this one item count is there this had to be a number this data type is number then this let me change the name of the variable maybe i have already created this variable so let me again it is showing let's set on this uh we can we can validate it by whether it is working properly or not see five seconds ago it ran successfully we can just see what it is returning back to our canvas app so it is returning 3430 which is which is correct and this item count 3430 is there so i can go to my flow here back this has to be correct only uh dot item count so let me write one two three up here just write simple one two three expected number but got a string expected a number but got a string at a same so maybe maybe what we can do is i let me let me just edit it up here maybe the issue is that uh, let me say let me change it to a string i'll say item count and again i'll click up here where sp count uh, i'll delete this one i'll send send a text from here okay not a number but i'll send a text maybe with a number it is giving some issues but uh, then we can we can do this okay let me refresh it again let's let's test it out let's see whether it is working properly or not this time so see it is working properly right 3430 records i am seeing up here so this time it is very very much proper so let me again change it to this pa12 this where 123 i'll remove and again i'll click on this button so you can see the count is coming properly right so this is how we get the total item count okay so i hope you you got this how we get the how we get the total item count correct so we can utilize this flow that we have so if i go back let me just show you the run history of this flow so don't send number back to your application just send a string so a string was working anyways that number was somehow converted to a string so that was that issue because here even the previous history if you if you have seen that that was a number so i don't know why it is like that it should be a number when we are returning a number but it was taking it as a text so it just anyways this this was a this was an integer this count that we are getting from the send an http request so see how easy it is and how fast it is to get the total count of item using this power automate okay so use this approach don't waste your time in any any of the other approaches don't use count rows kind of formula just go with this one it's it's way better okay now how to get all the items from your from your uh, sharepoint list up here okay and how to show them in in the in the gallery so before i do that i'll click on this see this insert label i'll insert label inside them and what i'll do once you add any label right just enable uh this flexible width property will be there so just enable that i'm just searching looking for it flexible width so see i enable that i'll click on this label what i'll do is i'll just give it some uh maybe a background color maybe this this green color i'll give i'll change the font color to white okay maybe i'll make them semi semi bold okay then i'll just simply what i'll do see copy paste 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 
whatever times you want to pay space then i'll go to tree view i'll click on this container if i want to give gap between them so i'll say maybe 20 20 is way too much i'll give two only two percent gap and i'll click on this container whatever the color of it is i'll change it to transparent okay so i change it to transparent now it is taking this yellow color the background color anyways later on i am going to change it also to let's say this transparent only this is just to show you okay and uh, let me now give the fields name let's say car id uh, this one will be let's say make this one will be model uh, this one will be generation generation and then uh, we have that one column called trim okay let me quickly copy paste paste then trim is there then we have trim is there then we have index id okay and we have series now siri now your question can be why it is going beyond the screen so it's not that it's going to fit if i click up here there is this property called minimum width is there so minimum width of each label had to be 250 if you decrease it to 50 let's say somehow it will try to align itself uh no no not this one i'll click on all the labels all the labels will have that minimum width property so once you enable this flexible width so minimal minimum width is being enabled now so if i change it to 100 right so it will they will auto adjust themselves okay so you can see up here they are they are perfectly auto aligning themselves uh let me let me rename this let me click outside and then rename this one i'll say car id c a r c a e so this is this is very much proper if i'll click up here if you think that this width is way too much if you wanted to decrease its width so you can see if i said 250 if you think 250 is way too much 200 will be more than enough this be my guess and see since it is a responsive application do you see the size is auto aligning itself right I think this is good. So whatever code you have written in this button, this should be or this should run automatically. So what I'll do is I'll copy this code. I'll click on this screen on visible property. And whenever this screen is visible, this code will auto run. So I don't have to press on a button to get the total item count. So I'll delete this. See if I change the screen from one to two, right? It will auto run. This will auto run and it will auto update. Correct. So this is this is well and good. Now in order to create gallery inside this see this is my label container i'll rename it to label container okay so this is this is my label container this is my gallery container so inside this gallery what i would recommend you is to create a blank flexible height gallery don't go with this vertical gallery okay just go with this blank flexible height gallery because the gallery that we want should look like a look like a, a table so i'll go with this one so I've added this gallery up here, as you can see. Now, some of you may be thinking where's the gallery, but there's this gallery, as you can see up here, it is saying add an item, okay. So right now, I can connect directly to this table car, but again, the problem will be delegation, even though with the less than 5,000 record, there will be no delegation, but then again, it's it's not a proper way to directly connect your uh, gallery with this with this table. And we will not do that see this gallery 2 is there first of all uh, i'll show you how to design this so template padding is there right always make it zero so i made it zero now click on this edit icon what i'll insert is see i'll insert a text input okay how many text input i need one two three four five six seven so i'll click up here what uh see this text input is already selected let me change its size to 10 first of all and all of these label size should also be 10. That is why they are looking way too big. So let me change their size to 10. Now I'll click on this text input. I'll change its size to 30 first, firstly. So this is this is this is good. Right now I'll just decrease its their width. In default, it is written like this. Let me remove this. Now what I'll do is I'll simply control C control V. V mode is there. Control C, Control V, and till now one, two, uh, six, one more is there. So I'll copy this, paste it. So all are done, right? 
So let's manually align them for now. Then I'll show you how to write the code in them. So this is there now. How to how to write uh, write codes in them? It's very 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 simple. I'll click on this car ID. What is the name of this label? I'll copy the name. I'll click on this text input. I'll go to its X. So whatever is the X of my label, the X of this should be the same. Again, I'll go to width, and the same thing I'll do. Whatever the width, then the same should be this width. Let me paste it first. Label six dot width. See. It is taking the same width, right? Again, I can click on make, copy its name and go up here. And again, I can do dot X and on its width, I can write dot width, right? So this is six underscore two, this is six underscore three, four, five. So all of them are in order. What I'll do is I'll select all of them together right then one by one i can i can change it's totally up to me how i how i do it so i'll say six underscore two dot x okay so see currently all of them are starting from the from the same position which shouldn't be the case but just to save time i'm doing like this i'll say dot width so width of all of them are like fine only so one by one if i go up here go to their x i can change it this one to three See this one I can change it to change it to four. Okay, I'm uh, from this left hand side tree view I'm selecting. Why I'm calling this tree view? Because on the top you can see. Then I go up here, I say five. And then if I go up here, go to this one, I'll say six. So see each and everything is properly aligned right what you can do is their width also i would recommend just go and change their width also so don't leave the width as well it will be good for you you only okay so five ka width should be five this width should be whatever you have written in its x the width should be the same thing not the two one but the same thing okay so that later on you don't have to like uh, you don't have to keep on searching what I did wrong, right? So just whatever is the X, just the same should be the width. Okay, so I think everything is properly aligned. Now, one thing that you need to do, just click on your gallery container. Just give padding from the left hand side 10 and 10 from the right hand side. Okay, so that you will see a little space for, for your gallery. Okay, here. This is this is a good practice. Now, if you see this way too big size, just click up here. There's so one row size is called template size. If I click up here and if I say let's say 40, you see it's properly there, right? If I say 62, so why I did 62, I'll tell you. Uh I'll click on all of these cells. So I know some of them are going to be way too big. So I'll change their mode to from single line to multi-line, first of all. I'll change their height from 31 to 60. I'll change their y to 2. You tell me 2 plus 60 is what? 42, right? So height of one row will be 62. So that is why in their template size, I have written 62. You can write code as well. Like what kind of code? You can just take any of the, the let's say text input 2 dot. You can write like this text input 2 dot y. Y plus text input two dot height and plus two no don't add plus two N no need to add anything okay this is this is more than enough so see it is cool right now what i'll do is i'll select again i'll try to select all of them uh, i don't want them to be edit mode i want them to be disabled okay but if they are disabled then their font will be light gray so i wanted to change it, their font to black so i change it to black if you want uh, to give them light gray color, which is well and good. But if you wanted to uh, make it transparent, you can make it transparent and just wanted to give uh, like some border. So you you can, everything can be done. Okay. L let's say you wanted to give only the gray border. So you can, you can give. So see, it is, it is working properly, right? Now I'll click on this, uh, this yellow container and I'll remove this color. I don't. Personally, I, I'm not liking this color, so I'll, I'm going to remove it. So this, I'll click on this gallery container and I'll say transparent. So you can see that uh, this this time it is it is very 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 much proper. 
if i play the application you can see that uh, the lines and everything is properly there if you think that the, the gap is way too much just click on all of these cells okay just change their y to let's say zero you can do that okay you can do you can change it to zero so that now it is they are like complete boxes up up there right <clears throat> Now j let me first of all just click on this gallery. I'm uh, for now. <clears throat> I'm connecting it to table card just to show you that. Uh, just to show you the data, I'll click on this first cell. I'll click on all the cells. Let me click on all the cells. I'll go to the default property. I'll set this item dot. Uh, there is this ID trim. ID trim is nothing but car ID. So I'll click on ID. Okay, I clicked on ID trim, but I don't know somehow. It got changed to so this generation, but generation is fine. Then I can click one by one. I can say, I don't know. Uh -huh. This one is ID trim. Okay. This one is make. So I'll say dot make. In my case, I don't have any choice column, date column in the back end. But if I if I would had those things, then I would have like the code will be little little different. Okay. For choice column, basically we just use dot value at the end. So that is that is there. I'll say model. Okay. Uh, somehow it it got transferred up here. Let me move it back to its position. So see, they are movable. If you click any of any one of them, and if you want to move this one to the right hand side, so see you can use arrow key. Arrow key. Okay. So the arrow key definitely works. Uh, the trim one is basically trim only. Trim is the horsepower, I guess. Yes. Then we have this uh, index ID. I have created one index ID column as I told earlier. It's always good to create an index ID column. Then we have the Siri, uh, which will tell the vehicle type, like whether it is a hashback or cabaret coupe. Okay, so this is cool, right? So I am seeing some of the data, but see right now if I, what is the problem with this? See if I click on this total label, if I control C, control V, and let me uh, enable the flexible width for this. So let me do that. And if I say total, if I say total items, or let's say current items in the gallery, current items in the gallery. Okay let's let's do like this and if i write a code like this let's say count again if i say count rows and then if i write uh, the name of my gallery is gallery 2 the same gallery 2 dot all items if i do this what you will notice is it is saying 100 but does this does this gallery contain 100 i haven't applied any filter but it is showing me 100 even if i scroll it down then it is this count is now increased to 200 if i scroll it down then it is it is saying 300 so this count is not proper, right? Even though this, uh, if I directly connect uh, to this uh, share, uh, if I directly connect my gallery to to a uh, share point list, it is going to show me all the items if they are less than five thousand. But then again, then again, this is this is wrong, right? Then again, this is wrong. One, uh, see how we can how we can overcome this thing. As you can see up here, the count is increasing when I'm when I'm moving this down. So this is this is not a good approach, right? Users will not move it down for you. They will ask uh, us developer to do do this kind of thing. Okay. Once first, let me click on this container. I will not give it any shadow, not give it any border roundness. So th this gallery container had some sh shadow in it. So that I removed. So this is this is looking looking fine. What I'll do is. Uh, the gray color that I have given is I'll make it transparent, keep it white only. And this container is there. So let me click on this container. This footer container is there. No, this count inside my footer container, I have this count, this container. I'll give it some shadow, maybe regular shadow. Okay. Uh, we can we can give border roundness as well. It's totally up to us, whatever, whatever things we want to give, right? Let's say 10. It's totally up to us. See how it is looking good, right? Let me change it to canvas size so that we can properly see. So this is this is cool. 
and this is also there uh, so if i play there is this is scroll but again i am not liking the current kind of view i have to like uh, to get the count i have to drag it all the way to the down so how to get all the count so one way of doing that is to create a collection but see if you if you'll create a collection where to create the collection first of all so uh, it's totally up to you you can uh, create a collection on app start or on visible property of the screen the way i have defined this right on visible pair i have defined this code so here you can create a collection let's say if i write clear collect okay i'll say collection i'll say collection cars okay so cars collection i'm creating and it is saying item so item is inside my the stable car if i do like this so it will create a collection for me and i can directly connect this collection to this uh, to this sharepoint list i can do that see currently it is connected to the stable car directly if i paste this code up here so it will be connected to my collection even though it is empty right now to run this code i need to just change the screen i need to go to screen one then come to screen two and that that code will that code will definitely is going to run let me refresh the app for now uh, save the app for now so let's wait let's first let it save so it is being saved now you can see what it is showing it is the current items in the gallery it is showing 2000 so collection was successfully able to retrieve 2000 record but beyond 2000 as you can see the total item that i have have is 3430 so beyond this it is not able to load so by this what we by this what we can uh, get is that a gallery can uh, sorry a collection has some delegation and it can retrieve only 2000 record at a time and why 2000 because in settings uh the data row limit that we have set is 2000 we cannot increase it more than 2000 so 2000 is the limit so how can we get more items in so there are multiple ways that you can go around with this one one is using filters which is good which is good but uh, again the problem is there so only 2000 records you can filter and then there is something called graph api with the help of graph api you can retrieve 5000 record at a time so graph api is also there so for filter let me just show you for filter for now so see this is the gallery so this time this time what i'll uh, no not up here i'll go to my this is screen number two so i'll use a filter up here filter table cars and filter base so see you need to have that index id column without that index id column it will not work again i'm telling you so index id you have to say greater than or equal to one and then index id should be less than or equal to it's a 2000 okay one filter is this i'll close the bracket again i'll copy this thing okay to add another uh set of table again you can put comma and say if it is greater than or equal to 2001 less than or equal to 4000 okay so this is how we can retrieve all the items in the collection so what i can do is firstly let me save that sometimes your application may hang when you when you when you are doing like this okay the performance of your app will remain the same but uh, sometimes the editor may hang okay so it it is very much possible with large data set it it gets hanged so you can see current item in the gallery is 3430 records so we are successfully able to retrieve all the records right and how easy it was to get to get all the record and and their count right so you can see up here we are successfully able to retrieve all the records if you want to show me with the help of graph api how we can do that uh, i can i can show you because in this above example i am using graph api only okay i can show you the code as well like uh, i'm using a graph api in the above example but uh, here in this in this example uh, i have not shown graph api it's very simple now some of your question can be like uh, how to make uh, like this filter the filter kind of thing that i've done up here how to make this dynamic right 
because I have written two time, but let's say you have 30,000 records. So you won't, you have to write it like 15 time manually. So I've already created one video. The link is in the description. You might be seeing information button on the top uh, right corner. So just click on that, watch that video. In that I've shown you like how to make this thing dynamic. There is just one like, uh, what do you say, update in that video. Just just read the description, okay? After you watch that full video, just read the description. You just need to change round function from round to round up, okay? Just one like change is there. But that video is very powerful. Just watch that, how you can dy dynamically load all of your data without like, uh, without uh, writing like this manually. Just use for all loop and just loop this thing. In this video, I'm not going to show that, okay? So this is this is cool. We are able to retrieve all the data. Now let us see how we can page paginate this thing. So if I click up here, let me change its color back to white. Okay, maybe transparent. Then this container also I'll give a regular shadow border radius. I'll give 10. Correct. And here, here, what I need to see the content of this should be uh, justify from the left and uh, sorry, right and side. Okay, so I did that. Firstly, I need one combo box up here. So for the drop down that we have, right? So I'll have that combo box. I'll change its height to 30 for now. And uh, the font size I'll change to 10. So these two small changes I did. And the width of this should also be 100, not whatever the width is. It's way too large. Let me change it to 100. I'll go to tree view pagination containers there. So align vertical property. Let me align it to center. You can see this is aligned at the center side. I'll click on click up here. What I need is I need a back arrow. So I'll search for a back arrow. Then after this back, uh, see this back arrow is way too big. So I'll change its height to maybe 25, which is which is good. Let me again change it so it's also to 25. This is also good. Now after this, I need one label to show like which page I'm on. So so here I'll see something like this. Let's say page number, then colon. If I say one slash 25, something like this uh, I want. And the size of this, the font size of this should be 10. Uh, the font way, this this should be center line. First of all, the font way, do you, we can keep semi bold. It looks good. Uh, the width I can keep 120 for now 120 is, is more than enough then I'll again copy this uh, con uh, this icon and paste it and then change from back to next I'll search for next and ext so next everything looks looks good everything looks good now I'll click on this container to have gap between them so I can write 20 to have a ample amount of gap if you want padding from the this right hand side so padding right is there let me say let's say 20 so <laughs> padding can be given right so it is uh, looking beautiful as you can see up here everything is like fine ui wise correct now to show like the item like uh, uh, that those item correct 10 uh, 20 50 100, 200, 500. How to do that? Go to its data source property. Here I'll provide one table. I'll say 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1000. You can customize this. It's totally up to you. Okay. I'll show you whatever number you will give. It's not that only it will work for these numbers. Whatever number you will give in future, it will work. You may think that it is cutting right now, but no, it, when I'll play it, it will be perfect. So see this this is this is cool uh everything is uh, everything is on point looking beautiful i'll click on this container also if you wanted to give it some shadow i can i can give it some shadow some border roundness i can give let's let me give some border also of one pixel so it is distinguishable so light light kind of border i can give i can uh what what i can do is i can give padding from the top also let's say 10 padding and from the bottom so that it will look good right the content will look good if i'll play the app now see everything is like very beautifully aligned very very beautifully arranged if i click on this one also let me just change its color back to transparent 30 is way too much let me change it to 20 and uh, from semi bold let me change it to regular here also i can give one pixels border to make it look good and uh, this one i can select 
so this is this is also looking good right uh just to uh, i'll select these two container as well and uh, just give them one pixel border as well okay so that all the consistency is there right so see now the consistency is there right in the ui so see this ui is very 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 much responsive in nature right even if i change the portrait mode so you can see the ui is proper right even if i go to mobile it will try to follow the rules some of the rules it cannot follow because of that minimum width property if you fix that then it will follow but for mobile anyways this this design it's not gonna work but if i rotate somehow it is it is trying to fit the item but again there is there are a lot of changes that we need to do okay for but for tablets it's more than good more than good enough and for our our laptops our monitors it's anyways awesome so this is there on the top now we just have to build the filter section so the first thing this is a vertical container as you can see the side nav bar is a vertical container how do i know this is a vertical container in its direction you can see here it is written vertical so firstly i need a filter icon up here and then the filter world and maybe that reset and reset world so for that what i'll do is i'll go to insert i'll first of all insert a horizontal container inside this container and uh, minimum width i'll change it to let's say 100 okay for this so that it will be properly filled when this uh, flexible height is enabled but i'll not enable the flexible height i'll turn it off uh, the height i'll give let's say 50 maybe that is also way too much but let's give 50 and here i'll insert one uh, there is this filter filter icon up there so this filter icon i'll insert uh, we can change its height again to 25 the width also to 25 to center align items in this container i'll click on this container and just uh, this vertical align property is there we can align that then there is this left padding is there so just give padding from the left let's give let's give 10 uh, let's give 10 padding okay 10 i will give from the right hand side so this is this is looking good and uh, no need to give drop shadow for this container no need to give border radius for this container so i'll remove that uh, I can change its color to let's say black or gray or whatever. Then the font is there. So font again and again I'll not type. So there is this auto height property for font as well. You can enable this. This is a, a flexible height. You can use this property. Uh, this page number I'll change it to let's say filters. And instead of center line I'll align it on the right hand side. The width of this is way too much. Let me change it to maybe 60 or 50 whichever works 50 is fine more than enough then here again i'll copy the space this and this icon i'll change uh, this icon i'll change uh, there is that button called reset so let's use this button and i'll say clear okay or you can like clear clear filters like something like that can be can be written okay trigger filters so see and uh, the width of this uh, for this one for this one i can enable flexible width but again the minimum width is there don't don't do that for now i'll make it width as 100 so 100 is also going beyond that maybe 80 is fine uh, yes 80 is fine i'll select these two let me change their color to maybe this red right so this is this part is done now below i need uh, i need filters so see this this container was just to have these these uh, design part you can say then uh, i'll click on the side nav bar insert what i need to insert just two things one is label i'll copy one of the label click on side nav bar i'll paste it okay and uh, the side nav bar content should be like center line so i can i can do center align like this this container is going uh, outside the reason it is doing that see this this width property is like messed up now i can write one code parent dot width to like fix it fix it to it so see this is this is fixed and now this filter is up here uh, instead of filter uh, let me first of all keep their width as maybe if i do 200 200 it will be full width so let me make it like 150 
ओके और मे बी वन एटी इज फाइन वन एटी इज फाइन सो दैट टेन पिक्सल गैप फ्रॉम द साइड टेन फ्रॉम द साइड आई लाइक टू लाइक गिव लाइक लाइट शेडो इट्स अप टू यू ओके सो वेन एवर यू आर बिल्डिंग फिल्ड राइट मेक इट वेरी क्लियर इन योर माइंड दैट द फर्स्ट थिंग लेट से मेक आई वॉन्टेड टू कीप इट ऑन द टॉप ओके एंड आई नीड अ ड्रॉप फॉर दिस कॉम्बो बॉक्स आई यूज दिस वन ओनली आई पेज दैट एंड द विथ ऑफ दिस अगेन आई फॉर नाउ आई एम मेकिंग इट हंड्रेड एंड एटी ओके नाउ वंस दीज टू आर डन सिंपली जस्ट कॉपी दिस टू कंट्रोल सी आई क्लिक अप हेयर कंट्रोल वी कंट्रोल वी control v control so how many you want it's totally up to you so this one is model let's say the next one is uh, let's a generation generation and this one is let's a trim in bracket i can write horsepower and then this one is uh, let's a cd cd r i e s and the last one is car id so it's totally up to you how how you want to design it but the way i designed it like this now to how to keep the gap between them just click on your side nav container there is this gap property it's up to you just give 10 pixels gap or 15 pixels gap or 20 pixels gap it's totally on you now if you want to give like some color to this one also again see some of the things are in our hand how we wanted to design so see how beautiful this is this is looking right now if i say ui wise this is looking very beautiful the only thing left is like filter filter section and the pagination section so let us see like how to do the pagination section first it's very simple it's very simple let me just tell you see first of all by default this number should be 20 okay so how how to how to select anything by default so just click on this combo box go to advanced there is this one property called default selected items just click on it inside a square bracket just write 20 okay this should be inside the square brackets so see now 20 is there which is which is well and good so by default 20 will be there so even if uh, so whenever you will restart your app 20 will be selected by default so this is this is cool now this 20 is there so see on press of this uh, the item increment should be by 20 so see i'll click on this first of all there is this on chain property I'll go up here. I'll write update context. I'll write where itr. So or maybe I write iterator. I'll create one variable called itr, and I will say self dot selected dot value. So whatever I am selecting, it should get updated in this itr. Okay. Now I'll copy this variable. See when I'll See this this icon is there, right? When I'll click up here, this itr. Let me just show you that itr also that variable, so that you can see what is happening in the picture. So if I say var itr, right? Var no, not var, but itr. I'm showing this variable in in this. So see, if I change this, see, if I say 50. So do you see this 50 up here? If I say 20, now that itr is 20. If I say 500. So see this that itr is keep on changing right let me say 20 so on press of this on press of this that itr should increase by whatever i have selected up here okay so the name of this combo box is combo box 1 so i'll copy its name okay and i'll go up here i'll say combo box 1 and just itr plus This. So whatever is my previous ITR, it will be plus this thing. So see this time. If I change this, let me first change this. Let's say fifty or let's say twenty. But if I click this, so it will increase by forty, sixty, eighty, right? Hundred to hundred twenty like this. But if I again click up here, if I change to fifty, so it is updated to fifty. But this time, if I click up here, hundred. So see, 
it is cool right now on press of this it should decrement in the same way it was incrementing up here right it it should decrement by whatever i have selected on this drop down so let me do that let's click outside go up here on select property i'll paste the code so this time instead of doing plus what i'll do is i'll do subtract and if i'll play the app see 300 if i click on this minus sign so it is decrementing by 50 and if i click up here it is incrementing by 50 okay now one thing that we should keep in mind that this itr if it is greater than this uh, number 3430 let me change it to any big number and see this if it is greater than 3430 this button should get disabled so that is what we are going to do uh, i'll click on this button I'll go to its uh, this property is there that is display mode. I'll write if my uh, this thing whatever code in my current gallery. Okay, so in my current gallery, I've written this this code right. So I'll copy this code. Very simple. I'll go up here. So I'll say if this thing count rows if it is somehow if it is greater than itr. Okay, then it then the button should be in uh, then this icon should be in edit mode. But if it is not, then the icon should be in disabled mode. If the ITR is somehow going greater, then it should be in disabled mode. So see, this is being disabled, right? But if I go back again, it is enabled. Correct. And now one more thing: if my ITR is greater than this number greater than thousand then this should be enabled otherwise this should not be enabled so this is the code that i'm going to write up here so i'll say if itr is greater than greater than combo whatever i have in combo box one dot selected dot value if it is greater then display mode display mode should be added otherwise this play mode should be disabled okay so see now it is being disabled right but if it is if it is greater than it is enabled so see how it is working right so this we are successfully able to do correct so this we are successfully able to do now what what we have to do is uh, this is just to explain you but i'll keep this for now later on i will delete this this is where itr now i need to show let's say whatever items i have selected up here right if i selected 20 so i need to show 20 only 20 items up here how i'll do that i'll click on my gallery see i'll go to this data source property connect currently it is connected to this collection cars so there is i don't know if you know about this function or not but there is this function called first n okay so if i say collection cars and if i put comma and i say itr so see how many items see it is starting from one and it is showing me 20 right is it showing me 20 or not so see it is sh correctly showing me 20 but the problem the way i did right now was this see i i have taken this this gallery which was wrong here also and here also so i cannot take gallery what i need to take instead is i need to take a collection take that collection so collection cars i need to take okay here also i need to take collection cars this is what i was thinking why it is not so that was an issue from my end i will fix that i need to take collection cars and here also i need to take here it is fine okay so see now this time it is fine so see only 20 items i'm seeing in my gallery and this is this is being enabled right well and good well and good uh if i click on next so see next set of 40 items are there but why i am seeing again the first 20 should should be should go should go right it should it should not repeat it should start from 21 but if i say 60 so i'm seeing first 60 see if i again click up here i'm seeing first 80 so this is working fine but i am seeing previous record as well so how to fix this just click up here the easiest way is before this first n, I can write last n. Last n should be whatever I have selected on this drop down. So this drop down name is combo box one. 
dot selected dot value whatever is the last of this like 20 i'll see those items so you can see up here this time it is proper right 61 to 80 if i click on next it will be 81 from 81 to 100 let me change it let me just show you 1 2000 so that you 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 won't think that this is not working 1 2000 if i click on next then you can see it is a starting from 1001 to 2000 right then uh 3000 but there is one problem see till 3000 it is fine right 2001 to 3000 but see next time it should start from 3001 right but it will not see it is starting from 2431 so there is this this problem is there again in the last page also it is trying to show me the thousand item which it sh which it should not right it should only see me show me the remaining 430 items but it is showing me all the thousand items again so we have to write some conditions up here on this code so this code is fine but again the condition will be if my <clears throat> count rows of uh, collection are as uh, greater than <clears throat> let me let me first close the bracket then i'll say if it is greater than itr okay then whatever we are doing that is correct but if my itr is somehow getting greater than this then the code will be the same just the minute tweaky bits i need to do okay just need to tweak the code a little bit what I need to do is I just need to show like last 430 items, right? Currently, I'm showing like this. So how will I do that? So see, I'll copy this thing. Copy. I'll just paste it up here. I'll just demo you guys with this with uh, with an example. Don't worry. And I'll subtract ITR from it. So just see my current ITR is I'll I'll give comment. So my total item is 3430. What is my what is what is my this in my this combo box or selected that is thousand and what is my ITR you can see up here it is four thousand so if I subtract four thousand from it so what is the count that I'm going to get it is nothing but four thirty right and this is what I needed in the in the last page I needed those four thirty items and this is what I'll get okay so the only thing that I missed is one more bracket so I'll close one more bracket and see this time. It is a starting from the correct position, right? 3001, the way it should start. And it is ending at 3430. If I go to previous page, absolutely awesome, right? From 2001 to 3000. And if I click on next, it is 3001 to, to this to this 3430. So this is how you paginate a gallery, okay? Now, if I, if I select, let's say, 20 also, so it is very much dynamic okay whatever page size you will select up here let me select the big numbers let's say 500 so that we can quickly reach uh, the end of the page so let me scroll down so see somehow we are overboard but uh, this is there see proper right 3004 in the 30 it is starting from the correct position ending at the correct position so right so everything is correct now just need to fix the page numbers so the page number should also be dynamic so i'll go up here how to make them dynamic see very easy this is this is the easiest thing see what i'll do is itr divided by first of all combo box one dot selected dot value this will give me which page i am currently on okay so 3000 divided by 500 is 6 page. If I go to previous page, right, 2500 divided by 5. So you can see up here, right, it's quite handy. So 500 by 500, page 1. Then this is page 2, page 3, page 4. I hope this, this makes sense to you. And then page 7, right. And after page 7, it is being disabled. And how to get the total number of pages so i i will again add a concatenation sign i'll use a division sign so that i can give a division in between and uh, i'll again use a concatenation sign so here i'll write count rows and count rows of what collection collection cars and if i divide this by let's say this thing uh this again combo box one dot selected dot value 
if I do this, so some decimal number I'm getting, right? But see if it is 6.1 also, 6.01 also. So that means I need to create another page for that to show that particular item, right? So I'll use round up function, round up function, okay? I cannot use round down, okay? Just think of it. You cannot use round down and just comma zero and close it and you can see i'm currently i'm on the last page if i click on back so see it is working properly right if i change the page number so you can see 172 if i change this so see pagination is successfully implemented right so we can say pagination is successfully implemented up here correct now I I have just created this label just to explain you. I had deleted that label. I'll save my application. So pagination is done. Okay. I hope I was able to make you understand how this pagination is working. Until now, if you are enjoying this video, I know it's a long video. It's a long what you say, stretch. But believe me, once you get all of this concept right, uh, you will become a better developer. It will help you in your development journey. Now, how to filter this thing? And if you are enjoying the content till now, just don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's a lot. Uh, now, let's let's see how we can filter. So, see, filtering is is kind of very interesting, you know. Let's say if you wanted to filter by this. Okay, so I'll copy. I'll rename them. Let's say filter. I'll say make filter. Okay, I'll name them like this, make filter, so that it will be easier for me to like know which filter is called what. I'll rename this to model filter. This one to generation filter. Generation filter. This one to trim filter. <coughs> trim filter this one to siri filter okay and this one to car filter okay i did uh did this these changes now now see how to filter with this this gallery i'll click on my gallery see you have to directly click on your gallery now i know there is a there is this code is already being written up there but here you need to somehow write the filter code okay now everywhere you have written collection card right you ne we need to update it with the filter code all right so for filtering what i'll do is firstly just to make you people understand i don't want to like mess up everything i'll comment to this code okay i'll comment the whole code <clears throat> and here i'll write simple filter filter now filter what collection cards now if you will see the syntax i know the syntax is being hidden hidden behind but see basically it is asking condition up here after this comma so after this comma let me remove this i'll say where my make make is equal to uh, make filter dot selected dot value if i do this and if i close the bracket just see up here if i play my application currently it's showing blank but if i select in the make one okay the make one i'm not seeing the correct things so how to see the correct things just go to its data source remove it i need to write distinct and then i need to write collection cars comma and then make okay need to do this so i'll see the two make one is bmw if i click on bmw so i'm seeing the bmw make if i click on the see this make is bmw if i click on kia so i'm seeing kia so filtering is working properly but if it is blank then i'm not seeing anything right so how to how to fix this okay nobody is going to tell you this but uh, this is uh, this is my secret trick see what you can do is you can use is blank also before this but again don't do that what you need to do is you need to write here if is blank and is blank what does make filter dot selected dot value if this is blank i'll say okay 
then the output of this should be true then show me everything otherwise filter it now i don't know if you get this part or not but see here i'm saying if the filter is blank then true true basically this is a condition right condition written in true and false only so if this is blank then it is then if it is blank then i am seeing true i am seeing all the data everything nothing is filtering but if it is if it is not blank if it contains any value then i'm filtering it by whatever value is being selected so just see up here if if it was blank i was seeing all the data but if it was not blank let's me select kia so it was filtering kia right now by this technique by this technique i can i can do anything i'll just copy this thing this code and see how easy it is now for me to code i'll click up here i'll use two and sign and 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 paste it and here i'll say model filter right model filter and again i can copy this model filter i can paste it up here now that I've pasted it up here, you may see some delegation warning, but see this delegation is not because of like uh, our code. It's because of this. I'll copy this distinct and let me first change all of these. Uh, so currently they are wrong. So I'll select all of them. I'll go to their data source property. So it has been written like this. So let me paste it up here. One more thing I need to do, just go to advance. Uh, uh this default selected items pay okay nothing is written which is good i thought something would be written so this is fine so in place of uh, i'll again select all of them i'll go to properties click on data source so see currently it is written make so i'll change it to model for the first one i'll change it to model now i'll click one by one this one will be generation the next one will be trim select this trim this one will be city and the last one will be id trim so car id is nothing but id trim okay so don't get confused why i why i have not written car id so there is nothing no column called car id in the back end back end it is called id trim so everything is done now see the delegation has been gone away okay so basically now it is not there so we are mapping correctly i'll copy it again see how easy it is and again i'll paste it so this time i'll change it to generation filter right i'll copy this thing i'll paste it up here and this word i'll change to generation then again i need to filter it's very very simple again and again i have to do the same thing see this one this time i'll change let me change it to let's say trim okay let me write out the word trim here t-r-i-m also i'll write t-r-i-m t-r-i-m then again i will copy this I'll paste it there is something called siri siri i'll copy this i'll paste it up here and there is something the siri is done now the last one is there that is car id that is car id so i'll say car filter copy paste it is called id trim in the back end so i'll write id in this code trim well and good right all the filters are done you can uh, you can see up here as well like by the color coding as well right here on my screen you can see the color coding as well if i'll play my application right if i filter by anything let's say make kia i know these are not cascading right now so it may not uh, i need to somehow let me select bmw so 
at least here i'll select the correct series okay so the series is there if i select like this so it is filtering properly right generation is there then trim horsepower let me say 115 right so maybe this one is not there so maybe i'll show you how to cascade this as well don't worry but for now if i could get some okay this this one is not there but let me remove this if i remove this then even then i am seeing the previous it i can skip this one uh there is no no vehicle for this let me select for minivan no hashback so in hashback i have hashback up here and then i can finally select the car ids right again uh these car ids should be there okay the car ids which i am which i am seeing up here okay so how to how to make uh, make this dynamic and first of all how to reset the filters okay to reset the filter it's very easy just click on this reset button just define one variable called update context and i'll say var reset and i'll firstly make it false then again i'll write update context i'll write var reset i'll change it to true okay and then this var reset variable i'll simply copy it and click on all these uh, drop down or you can say combo boxes go to advanced and search for reset property there is this property called reset i'll paste it up here okay and if i click on this see they are being reset it right so it's very good now see how to cascade the drop downs i'll click up here whatever code i have written right i'll copy this whole code simply just copy the whole code now i'll click on this id car id okay and uh, let me again select all of them first of all and i'll select i'll go to data source i know all of the data source are different so i'll now one by one i'll see the data source is there right wherever this collection car is written just paste your paste this filter code i know it will throw me an error reason because i cannot filter car id in car id only it will be circular property so i need to remove this car okay this uh, one wait a sec wait a sec this car id filter is starting from here and it is ending till here so i need to remove this part see as soon as i remove it no error right just simply copy this code not everything but from this from filter to the, wherever it is closing and go up so start from bottom okay don't start from top start from bottom that's the trick to it now i'll double click up here i'll paste paste this thing up here okay <clears throat> so yes so this is this is fine uh, i need to remove this uh, it is siri right so need to remove the siri where the siri is so it is starting from up here it is ending till here so i remove it so see now there is no error now again the same thing i will copy the code click on the trim horsepower paste it now i'll remove the trim horsepower this one okay so trim filter i'll remove so there is no error again let me again copy it so control c click on generation and paste it and then remove the generation filter this till here which is well and good now again i'll copy this filter code okay i'll click on the model one again i'll paste it up here and i'll remove this one and the first one will remain the same okay don't change the first one so see this time how it will work if i select kia right so all the mod kia models will come up here see this time if i click on any one of them everything will come okay they are not blank this time fine and generation also see only generation 1 is there for this let me select any one which has more data so see three generations are coming so if i select generation 1 restyling so you can see in trim also like this right in three everything is properly aligned if i reset the filter if i select kia make and if i directly go to sedan like let's say kia sedans so if i click up here i am seeing kia sedans 
but note above you cannot select now these three will be wrong if you like go on selecting them so just deselect first and then keep on selecting okay like let's say uh, this model we are looking for let's say forte we are looking for right in forte we are looking for a sedan or uh, a sedan let's say sedan so see a forte sedan it is coming now how to show the number of count that we have selected very simple just again go up here copy this filter code no need to do anything just copy this filter code go up here instead of this just paste this code that's it so see 20 items is coming up here correct now the same thing can be done up here so see i will cut this code whatever the code i have written up here i'll cut it i'll remove this comments okay and wherever i have the school collection car right i'll paste it wherever i have that thing i'll paste it let me press control that something went wrong okay wait a sec 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 let me again control exit something went wrong so let me decomment it this time i'll do it with a cool mind i'll paste it properly so till now no error here i'll go i'll paste it very carefully no error i'll paste it very carefully no error paste it very carefully no error i know the code is way too much way too much code is there but don't get scared everywhere wherever the uh, the coal cars were collection cars were written right i have replaced it with this count uh, this filter code okay wherever this filter is starting and wherever this is ending till here see i have replaced it with this code and you also need to do that now i'll click on this arrow in this arrow also we have to fix the code so in the display mode firstly i fixed it so display mode is being fixed but i need to fix at one more place so there is this action uh here it is i think it is fine maybe maybe here mm -mm -mm. here 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 we need to change yes so i'll remove this with this one this code so see this is how you will make everything very dynamic see 20 anyways 20 items so one page only but if i remove the sedan from up here so you can see items are 48 and this page is like one then till 40 up on this page right and if i click on next then the rest eight i am seeing on this page you can count also right so 48 proper if i say 50 right so only one page will be there why why there will be two pages right so isn't it isn't it amazing if i click on reset so we are successfully able to reset and again we are on our default view right so if i click on 20 so this this was our default default view i can again let let me show you the filtering again so let me show you this or maybe see so filtering is working properly right even the counts are proper everything is delegation free and what one good thing about is it's a responsive application so i have shown you so many things in this video i hope you enjoyed this one so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one till then take care goodbye